What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And if you didn't see the news, the New York Giants lost a linebacker this week. Gerard Davis is undergoing knee surgery or already underwent knee surgery and is expected to be out for a pretty long period of time. He's technically out indefinitely. So what are the Giants going to do at LB2? Because Gerard Davis, his name was in the running. Now, it was a position battle. He was going to be competing with those two second-year linebackers that the Giants have, Micah McFadden, Darian Beavers, but Gerard Davis, the veteran of the group, the player that fits best into a base 3-4 defense of those three guys, now no longer able to play for the team with this injury. So what are the Giants going to do at LB2? Well, today we're going to be discussing three different linebacker options that the Giants could potentially sign in free agency ahead of training camp. So we're going to dive into that, give you the stats on them, and give you our personal preferences as to who the Giants should possibly sign. But before we dive into all of that, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to to the channel if you are new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section if you're listening on apple or spotify please make sure to leave us a five-star review go ahead and follow us on twitter on instagram and threads at fireside giants check us out on facebook as well and before we dive into the episode i have to say massive thank you to all of you fireside giants fans for helping us reach 10,000 followers on instagram huge milestone for us we're hyped about it we posted an awesome graphic uh with eli manning on it shout out to our graphic designer danny he is the goat none of this would be possible all of this beautiful scenery that you see around us on these episodes none of it's possible without danny so massive shout out to danny but let's go ahead and talk about these linebackers alex how are you doing today my friend and what are your thoughts on some of these linebackers that the giants could sign I'm doing great. You know, draw Davis going down, certainly unexpected, but you know, he was supposed to be a depth piece. I wasn't going to pencil him in as a star. I think Michael McFadden still has the uh, favor to, to win that job, but there are some decent free agents on the market that could fit the bill, at least athletically uh, gifted ones. And some guys that have had some production in the past and you know, want to discuss a couple. And you no, know, the first one that stands out to me is miles Jack, you know, spent a lot of his career with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then last season with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, um, you know, he's a guy that former second round pick. Actually, all three of the guys we're going to discuss are second round picks, which is kind of interesting. Um, last year, he played in 692 defensive snaps. He had 80 tackles, allowed 363 yards in coverage with three touchdowns. He did only have a 7.5% missed tackle rate, which is pretty low, um, you know, for linebackers, with that type of volume. So definitely there, there's some value there. I think uh, athletically, he is very gifted, or at least he was before the big, I think he had ACL tear a couple of years back. And look, he's only 27 years old. Like he's still really young. Um, I don't see the downside to bringing in a guy like this that like you might be able to get some value out of. And even, it's just a backup role. Like you're not you're not signing this guy to be a starter. You're signing this guy to compete for the LB2 role. And like worst case, he ends up as a depth piece behind McFadden, Beavers. And it just brings some experience to a group that kind of needs it. Um, you know, losing Gerard Davis, not the biggest deal in the world. We picked him up, only played three games for us last season. You know, there was a pretty decent probability he wasn't going to make the roster at all. Um, I think. The more likely scenario, which Anthony and I kind of agree with, is that the Giants will probably wait until roster cuts happen, and they'll just plug one of those LB spots with um, kind of a veteran minimum guy. But, like, again, Miles Jack could be a veteran minimum guy at this point, Um, you know, obviously not getting much attention on the free agent market. What do you think about Miles Jack? You know, previously kind of a really exciting prospect, athletically gifted, uh, but certainly has seen a little bit of a downturn in his production over the past couple of years. Listen, at one point in his career, Miles Jack was a really damn good player, but you're talking five years ago at this point. You're talking 2017. He was a really good player for the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, with 93 tackles, didn't miss many tackles, was phenomenal in coverage that year as well. But that was back when he had the ability to play a full workload. He got to go out there and play 1,200 snaps that season. 2022 with the Steelers, only 692 snaps. So there's a big difference. Now some of that is the fact that he's older now. He's had injuries in the past. He can't stay on the field full-time anymore. The other half of it, he's not that good anymore. Miles Jack, there's a reason that he's still on the free agency market. However, he is still a player with some potential to do something, right? Now, my thing here with Miles Jack, I don't know if he fits into the Giants defense because back when he was playing for Jacksonville, that was your base 4-3 defense. And that that requires your linebackers to be very good in coverage. But there are differences to playing an off-ball linebacker position in 3-4 and 4-3. Gerard Davis, like I said, was the perfect 3-4 inside linebacker because he was such a thumper, just one of those guys who can plug a hole, shoot a gap, 
run stop. That's all he had to do in that 3-4 base defense. Miles Jack, can he do that well in a 3-4 base defense? Maybe, but I'm not sure I really think he he can because honestly, that Pittsburgh Steelers season that he just had this past year, not his best work. And the Pittsburgh Steelers playing that traditional 3-4 base defense seems like he wasn't much of a scheme fit. So for me personally, I like Miles Jack. He was really exciting to watch about five years ago for the Jaguars. But now at this stage in his career, I don't think he makes a whole lot of sense for the New York Giants. Now, does it hurt to bring him in on a veteran minimum deal if they can get him for that price? Absolutely not. It doesn't hurt. You might as well give him a try. He's still an athlete. I'm sure he's still more athletic than the majority of linebackers in the NFL. But again, I just don't think he's a total scheme fit for the Giants. And I think that there will end up being more enticing talent that hits the waiver wire once we get through preseason, as you just mentioned, Alex. So I'm not super high on Miles Jack, but Alex, who is the next player on the list that you want to discuss for the Giants? So the next guy on the list that I'd like to discuss is Deion Jones. And Deion Jones, uh, this is a tough way to say this. He kind of sucks. Uh, but again, you're not bringing in these guys to be starters. You're bringing them to be death pieces. And, you know, Deion Jones has seen a pretty monstrous regression uh, during his days with the Falcons. You know, he had a couple of really good seasons with the Falcons and, you know, was actually one of the better linebackers in football. And then he went to the Browns and, like, just fell off a cliff. My God, the guy stunk in 2021 specifically. Uh, you know, 28-year-old right now, former second-round pick out of LSU. His 2021 season that look, legitimately might be one of the worst coverage seasons I've ever seen from a linebacker. Anthony, you're gonna, your eyes are going to bleed. Your ears are going to bleed when I tell you about these numbers. <laughs> in coverage, he gave up 884 yards and four touchdowns. I don't know what the hell was going on or what the hell the Browns had him doing, but giving up 884 yards in coverage is actually like difficult to do. It's hard to do that. If you're not a, a bad cornerback, like you could think like a really bad cornerback might like approach that number, but for a linebacker to give up 884 yards, that's like, what the hell is going on here? Um, so again, he's on the list because he's a decent run stopper and he's got some physicality and like, you know, he, we would not be asking him to cover anybody. You'd really be looking at Bobby Okereke, uh to help in that regard and maybe help you know, your slot corner. Deion Jones is not my preference. He's just one of the free agents on the list. Uh, you know, this is a guy that's seen a significant fall off, maybe a change of scenery, maybe a better coaching staff would help turn things around a little bit. You know, who knows? But, you know, what are your thoughts on Deion Jones? Probably someone I'd stay away from. I'd rather go Miles Jack personally. Um, actually, you know, the next guy we're going to talk about is pretty decent, too. I might even go in his direction. But what are you thinking about Deion so far? For reference, you know, that insane amount of yardage that you just mentioned for Deion Jones, what was it, 884 yards in 2021 in coverage. Just comparatively speaking, this past season, the highest total that a linebacker gave up in coverage was 795 yards. So he was almost 100 yards greater than that. And it was Devin Lloyd of the Jacksonville Jaguars this past year. I will say a couple of things uh, to Deion Jones's credit, not really credit, but kind of credit on that regard. He was playing back in one of those 4-3 defensive schemes with the Atlanta Falcons that just puts those linebackers in coverage pretty much all the time. They're asked to do way more in coverage. They receive far more targets than your traditional 3-4 linebacker. The Giants linebackers don't receive that many targets in coverage compared to what Deion Jones was facing over in Atlanta. So there was just more opportunity for him to give up yardage. But looking at the completion percentage, 84.8%. That is a damning number, and that tells you all you need to know. 11.3 yards per reception. That was a historically bad year for Deion Jones in coverage. And not only that, dig a little deeper into those stats. Of the 884 yards that we mentioned, 590 of those yards were after the catch. Now, let's see. What was his missed tackle rate that year? A career high 16.9%. So there's the real problem with Deion Jones in 2021. It's not necessarily the fact that he stinks in coverage. He might just stink at tackling. And if you're a linebacker, that's probably the number one thing that you can't stink at. Tackling. That's your primary job. Wrap people up. Get them to the ground. So Deion Jones, again, he was facing a lot of targets in coverage that season. But he was also not doing much once those targets turned into receptions. He was missing a lot of tackles. And that turned into a lot of yards after the catch. So when you're a linebacker and you're playing in a 4-3 defense, you can't miss tackles over the middle of the field. you got to wrap up. And Deion Jones... He's struggled the past few years. Kind of a similar story to Miles Jack, one of those 4-3 linebackers who was just a freak athlete early on in his career and was super fun to watch. But as the game changes, 
as those players start to slow down and as they look into new teams with new schemes, they usually don't do as well. So Deion Jones, I know that the Giants had him into training. They had him in for a tryout or something earlier this offseason, expressed a little bit of interest in him. I could see him winding up with the team because of that. He's already got some familiarity with some of the coaches, with the training facility. He's been on the on the team's campus before. So there is an opportunity where Deion Jones, you know, later on this offseason, the Giants are like, okay, let's call him back up. Let's get him in here. We need bodies. But that's really all Deion Jones is going to be, just another body on the roster because the Giants need more depth at the position. But I wouldn't hold my breath for this player to have a resurgence resurgence in his career. I wouldn't really give him any high expectations if he does wind up with the New York Giants. But I will say, you never know. Players can turn their careers around at any point. And again, this is a player who had a lot of athleticism and a lot of talent early on in his career. So maybe the Giants put him out there in their nickel defense and he's able to play in coverage and hopefully do a much better job. Because again, at one point, he was a very good coverage linebacker. He just really fell off a cliff, like you mentioned, the 2021 Alex. But that's my take on Deion Jones. Again, kind of alluding to the fact that I feel like these guys on the waiver wire are going to serve the Giants better. But who is this third option that you've identified in free agency, Alex? So the last guy that I have in mind is Zach Cunningham, who I actually kind of like for the Giants, uh, former Houston Texan and uh, Tennessee Titans linebacker, 28 years old, former second round pick out of Vanderbilt, pretty solid run defense grades throughout his career. Now, he only played 205 snaps last season had 15 tackles but he can fill the gaps he has some pretty good uh physicality um you know again not the best in coverage but he's not as bad as Deion jones is um you know i i kind of think that cunningham is a nice like high upside player he's young um you know i actually don't think he's as young as uh miles jack is uh, maybe very similar age so you know you're looking at yeah, yeah jack is 27 so you're looking at zach cunningham um, some upside there a guy that's you know has some really good success like he has really solid run defense grades if you go look him up um, like he's a good player in that regard. Now he's not going to be so solid in coverage, but the Giants, like they're not, you're not going out and getting a linebacker because they're good in coverage. You're going out and getting a linebacker because they're good against the run. And if you have the benefit of having both, you have both good run and coverage support. That's super nice, but it's, you know, not always the most realistic thing. Um, you know, Kerry K uh, prides himself on both, but it's easier said than done. So, yeah, Zach Cunningham, definitely an interesting player that I kind of put on the list here. And I think that may be uh, a decent option for the Giants. So the one thing that I will say about Zach Cunningham, well, two things that I'll say. One, there's an obvious connection here between him and Ryan Cowden, the front office executive member that the Giants added this offseason, formerly of the Tennessee Titans, Zach Cunningham, previously with the Tennessee Titans this past season. The second thing that I will say about Zach Cunningham is he was released by the Titans earlier this offseason because of a failed physical designation. So is he healthy? Is he ready to go this upcoming season? I think that's a pretty big question mark. He missed a lot of time last season with an elbow injury, played in only six games. Elbow injuries are weird. You know, they can linger. They can really affect your performance on the football field. So Zach Cunningham being released in, I think this was February. Yes, in late February with a failed physical physical designation is a cause for concern. But if he is healthy, this is probably my favorite of the three players that you've identified, Alex. I think that his ability to play in a 3-4 defense is the most translatable of any of these guys that we've mentioned because of the fact that he's more of a pure run defender than he is one of those coverage athletic linebackers. Zach Cunningham, a player who previously with those Houston Texans, they've been running the 3-4 defense for years and years. And again, he fit into that well. Those were the best years of his career from 2017 to 2020 with Houston. That's when he was in his prime and at his best. He doesn't miss many tackles. He does well in the running game. Back in 2020, he had 70 run stops. That's a really, really high number um, to have uh, from the linebacker standpoint. So this is a player that of those three that you mentioned, Alex, I'm leaning towards Zach Cunningham. Again, the connection to the front office, uh, his ability to play in run defense. But the big question mark for me, is he healthy? Can he actually go out there and contribute this upcoming season? That's the big question mark, and we'll see if that can get answered. But in all likelihood, Alex, I think the Giants are just going to end up going with one of the two linebackers that they have on the roster at that LB2 position. The three guys that we mentioned, while yes, there's intrigue to all three of them, I could see any one of them getting signed to this team. But ultimately, I don't think they win that LB2 job. In my opinion, and I want to hear your opinion on this too, Alex, before we wrap up, I think that job is Micah McFadden's job to lose now with Gerard Davis out indefinitely. Micah McFadden has the experience edge over Darian Beavers. Yes, they were drafted the same year, but Beavers missed his entire rookie season with an injury. Also, Beavers is your prototypical 3-4 inside linebacker. He's 
tall. He's, you know, a, a good run defender, but he's also pretty slow and he's not very athletic. Micah McFadden, great pass rusher. That's a that's a huge plus for Wink Martindale's defense. And he is a pretty good run defender. And as I mentioned, he got a lot of experience, played in every game last season, made seven starts as a rookie. And Wink Martindale likes the kid. So I think that it's just Micah McFadden's job to lose. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do this upcoming season in his sophomore year. But Alex, what are your thoughts on those two guys, Micah McFadden, Darian Beavers, and how this is kind of now a race for just the two of them to win that LB2 spot? Look, I think Michael McFadden probably has an 80% chance of winning that LB2 spot. You mentioned it, the uh, pass rush prowess, the you know improvements he made. I think he struggled last year, but according to Wake Martindale, he's made some pretty big improvements this offseason. What does that look like? Maybe it's a physical you know, form thing. Maybe it's the mental like, the IQ portion of it. There's a lot of different variables you can improve during the offseason that translate, but you know we'll see. I think that first year as a rookie, getting some substantial amount of snaps, that's a good thing for Micah McFadden. Beavers, on the other hand, is basically going into his rookie season. So I'm not looking at – I'm looking at Beavers to play the McFadden role this year that as McFadden did last year. So, like, he's a depth piece. He's a first call-up if there's an injury. Give him some opportunities in a blowout. You know, put him in there in some specific, uh, you know, groupings and see what he can do. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Beavers is, like, going to be a good player because we don't know. But what I do know is that McFadden got the experience he needed to hopefully start to understand the NFL game, what it takes. I think physically he's more than capable. Um, I think mentally the IQ portion of it needed to improve. He, you know, kind of got caught out of position a couple times. Um, but I think as a pass rusher, he's exactly what the Giants wanted. He was a Wink Martindale selection after all. Like this is a guy that fit their mold, fit what they wanted. So um, I think McFadden definitely has the advantage here. And I'm excited to see if he can take a big step forward because having him like even become average alongside O'Karaki would give us one of the best linebacker cores we've had in a long time. In a very long time. The Giants have been below average at that position for almost a decade at this point. So, I mean, they had that one really good season with Blake Martinez, but ever since then and every year before then, they've really struggled at the linebacker position. But I do think that Bobby Okereke serves as a massive upgrade to the unit. And hopefully, Michael McFadden can take that step forward in year two and also serve as an upgrade to the unit. And those two can really bolster the defense led by defensive coordinator Wink Martindale. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with linebacker spot again i do think that the giants will add talent to the position i just don't think it'll happen through free agency i think it'll happen through the waiver wire towards the end of the preseason when all of these teams are cutting their rosters down from 90 men to 53 men that's when i think the giants will find a linebacker to add to the roster but until then we'll just have to wait and see and of course we'll continue to update you on everything with the giants linebacker position and everything regarding the new york giants right here on fireside giants so make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode subscribe to the channel if you are new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section if you're listening on apple or spotify please make sure to leave us a five star review and go ahead and follow us on twitter on instagram on threads on facebook fire Side Giants, go check us out, and we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one, and let's go, Giants.